Greetings, dear brothers and sisters. In the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again, to Messiah and Messiah alone be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the 12th day, right, David? Yes. And today is the 12th day, right, Anna? Yes. Yeah, dear, dear brothers and sisters, today is the 12th day of the fourth month of the year 2018. And we have gathered once again in the holy name of our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Messiah says in Matthew 18, 20, dear brothers and sisters, that where two or three gather in my name, I will be there in the midst of them, claiming on that particular scripture, dear brothers and sisters, Matthew 18, 20, that where two or three gather in Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach's name, that he will be present there. So claiming on that scripture, today let us once again, we have gathered, dear brothers and sisters, to have a fellowship. Today Anna has a cover sheet for us. We are going to have the song use the karaoke for what a friend we have in jesus we will read some scriptures as the lord is leading us so today dear brothers and sisters we welcome you to join us in this fellowship fridays it's typically it will be friday basically by the time the video is up so we welcome you to join us in the fellowship fridays with our faithful friend and that faithful friend is yeshua hamashiach jesus christ of nazareth dear brothers and sisters as Messiah says, where two or three gather in his name, he will be there in the midst of them. If we take it a step further, then Psalm 1611 says that in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore, dear brothers and sisters. When we get in his presence, we get that fullness of joy. That joy which we are looking for all through the entire, through this month, entire through the week, and through this entire day. Whatever that time duration be, dear brothers and sisters, only when he come, when we come in his presence, there is deliverance. Only when he, when we come in Messiah's presence, there is healing, there is restoration, and there is joy, which is to the fullest, dear brothers and sisters. So today, as we gather in the holy name of Yeshua HaMashiach to have a fellowship together, dear brothers and sisters, it is so very crucial as we see that all the end time prophecies are coming together as we see that our Messiah's return is indeed upon us, dear brothers and sisters. We see the lack of fellowship. The fellowships are drying up. And we see, of course, we are all excited to meet our Messiah, meet our Creator in the air, dear brothers and sisters. We all are waiting for that. But in the meantime, the enemy knows his time is short. And that's why Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 through 25, which is a scripture told for, spoke for this time for you and me, for each one of us as true believers, true born again believers of Messiah who is waiting upon Messiah's return. Paul tells us that in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 through 25, that let us hold fast the confession of our hope. Without wavering. And how do we do that? We do that by digging into the scriptures and the word of God deeper and deeper. And using the sword of the spirit which is the word of God to fight this battle. Dear brothers and sisters we are in this cosmic conflict. In this warfare and we are dragged into it most of the times every single day without even our knowledge. But Messiah who has promised for our protection. He is faithful. He will protect us. But we need to. Run to him. The Bible says that his name is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Today is the day to run to the strong tower. So continuing what Paul says that let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. That is Hebrews 10 23 continuing to 24 and let us consider one another in order to stir up Love and good works. Verse 25 is the Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Dear brothers and sisters, perhaps is the most crucial verse which we should be clinging on to in these end moments. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see that they are approaching. Dear brothers and sisters, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as we see that day approaching. That day is upon us. Rapture is upon us. And as we see the day of rapture approaching, which is imminent, which is any moment now, Paul is telling us that it will be, some of us will be so much engrossed 
in those particular details of rapture that we will be forsaking the assembling of ourselves we will be forsaking that the object of all this rapture and every single thing the objective of that is to glorify Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach and dear brothers and sisters when we get into this when we get sidetracked when the enemy gets us sidetracked that's the time the enemy will try to strike and attack us and we will be in a space in a place where we don't want to be dear brothers and sisters so we today welcome you once again to our fellowship Fridays with our faithful friend Yeshua HaMashiach so please do join us dear brothers and sisters first John 1 3 tells us that that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ of Nazareth Continuing in 1st John chapter 1 verses 5 through 7 says this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he as Messiah is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. His son cleanses us from all sin. Dear brothers and sisters, today is the day. So as we gather together, let us invite the presence of God. Let us once again experience the fullness of joy. Let us once again let the Holy Spirit fill us. Let the Holy Spirit minister our deceitful hearts. Jeremiah 17, 9, chapter 17, verse 9 tells us that above all our heart is incurably wicked it is deceitful dear brothers and sisters we are not here to trust what our heart is telling us we are here to trust the scripture because it's the word of God which can discern between what is going on in our mind and heart dear brothers and sisters Hebrews 4 12 is an authority so today as we get in his presence let us pour out pour out our hearts whatever we have let us read the scriptures let us once again draw our strength from the well from the living fountain from the living waters from Messiah from Yeshua HaMashiach himself and let's start with the word of prayer shall we David yes shall we Anna yes all right our Heavenly Father as we gather together today in your holy name Lord we stand on your word as you said in Matthew 18 20 Lord you said that where two or three gather in my name I will be there in the midst of them father today we just praise you we just bring ourselves I bring myself Anna and David and our dear fellow brethren and our dear brothers and sisters as you're leading us in this fellowship right is Lord we with our faithful friend Lord we look forward to be ministered by your spirit Lord minister our hearts with your Holy Spirit and that this time father we pray that and please do pour out your spirit on each one of us and give us the love of commitment that Paul had towards his spiritual family and today help us Lord to keep ourselves our flesh into perspective as we come in your presence and father please do give us today the depth of resource humility that we may exhibit and exalt our Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth Lord May our prayers every single day be a petition for humility rather than a substitute for it. Help us today, Lord, to take every thought captive, every single thing what we have done today, every single way we have exalted our thoughts, our deeds in every single way over you, Lord. We bring it captive and help us today once again to acknowledge our ownership of each negative thoughts. And today, Lord, draw us to repentance so that we can forgive others where we feel we have been wrong. Heavenly Father, today once again we pray for our, for our dear fellow brethren, for ourselves, that for each one of us, that please do give us a thirst and unending hunger, Lord, an unending desire for you and your word, to know you, to dig deeper in your word, to understand your attributes as you have laid out in your word, Lord. And today, once again, Lord, keep us free from the bondage of legalism or the false comfort of rules. And also, Father, please do equip us in these end moments with the full armor for the warfare that we are engaged in. In these end moments. And please do help us, help our dear fellow brethren today, Father, to see clearly just where you want each one of us, where you want them to be. And help us, Lord, to relish the comfort and security that place assures us. Father, today help each one of us to measure everything, especially our credentials, by the cross of Calvary and not our flesh. May our own resume every single day reflect 
gold, silver, and precious stones are not the quest for wood, hay, and stubble. Today, help us, Lord, to focus with a singleness of devotion to our Lord that we may not be beguiled or blinded by the wiles of the enemy or the glitter that this temporal world has to offer. Heavenly Father, today, once again, please do keep us diligent towards false teachers and treacherous doctrines in these end moments as you had warned in your words that these will be increasing. So help us today, Lord. Keep us diligent, Lord, towards these false teachers and treacherous doctrines, Lord. But yet, let us never abandon our first love. For we do love you, Father. Today, help us, Lord. We can love you, Lord, the Bible says that, because you loved, the, loved us first. Today, help us, Lord, to see you ever more clearly, and thus love you even more, Lord. And Heavenly Father, today as we read the scriptures together with our dear fellow brethren, with our dear brothers and sisters and worship you, Lord, please today do open our hearts and lives to your word and your words to our hearts and lives and help us today to worship you in truth and in spirit. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of our mouths, Lord, be acceptable in your sight at this time. All this we pray in the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. The line from the tribe of Judah and the root of David, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen. and amen and amen. Right, so dear brothers and sisters, today the Lord is leading us to dwell into Psalm 34, an astonishing psalm. It is our wisdom psalm, a psalm of praise. We see all the elements of praise basically in Psalm 34. And once again, dear brothers and sisters, we will be using a New King James Version, of course. But you please do feel free, dear brothers and sisters, to follow along or use your own version, own Bible, whatever you're using, dear brothers and sisters. That should not be a hindrance because the Spirit of God will accomplish His purpose irrespective if we don't quench or if we don't, if we yield to the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit will accomplish His purpose during this time. So let us once again jump into Psalm, Psalm 34. Psalm 34 is basically another acrostic psalm. Now, acrostic psalms are the ones which basically is which is with one verse for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So we see I believe Psalm 25, Psalm 37, Psalm 111, Psalm 112, Psalm 119, 145. These are all acrostic psalms. As a matter of fact for Psalm 119 those are all different uh, passages it has for all the Hebrew alphabets. I mean five or six or seven verses it is devoted to each of the Hebrew alphabets and for few of them, few of the other alphabets, maybe more than seven verses. But this psalm is basically an acrostic psalm and the title of the psalm as we see it says, A psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. So this psalm basically ascribes it to King David. And it specifies that it was written to commemorate his escape, King David's escape from Abimelech, the king of Gath. And that account is given in 1 Samuel chapter 21 verses 10 through 15. And uh, I believe the name of the name of the king in 1 Samuel chapter 21 is Achish. A-C-H-I-S-H. -I, -I, I believe it's Achish, however you pronounce it. But the uh, dynastic title, the dynastic title of the Philistine kings used to be Abimelech so as in this psalm and this psalm also connects the title of this psalm connects this with King David's dangerous experience which we had which he had with the Philist Philistines at Gath and that is once again recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 21 and you can do it from 10 verses 10 through 15 or you can do a little more 10 through 22 perhaps it talks about after which he fled to the cave of Adullam so that's when after fling that's when king david writes this psalm and this psalm has 22 verses and the structure of the psalm is very interesting the first three verses is a call to bless the lord the verses 4 through 8 is a call to seek the lord verses 9 through 16 we see is a call to fear the lord verses 17 through 22 is a call to trust the lord those are all the elements as a true believer which we need to dwell into so Let's jump into Psalm 34 and let the Spirit of God minister our hearts so that His purpose be accomplished during this time. Psalm 34, the happiness of those who trust in God. 
a psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Dear brothers and sisters, let's take a pause and see. King David is telling, I will bless the Lord at all times. Have or do we get to do that? Have we done that today? Have I done that? Have I done this? Have you done? Have you been praising him today at all times? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. As a matter of fact, it echoes first. Paul says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, he says that's actually the will of God. We keep looking for the will of God, but Paul explicitly tells us in the scripture, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, Paul says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. This is the will of of God in Christ Jesus for you. Dear brothers and sisters, if we claim to be the bride of Messiah, if we claim to be the true born again believer, saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth shed on Calvary, then this is the will of God. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. That will is for you and me, dear brothers and sisters. And that's what in the Old Testament, that's what King David here is referring is the same thing. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Dear brothers and sisters, this is not an Old Testament concept. Paul tells us that's the will of God for every true born again believer. So dear brothers and sisters, today let us once again take that into account. Let's take that to our prayer closet as the Lord. And dear brothers and sisters, to be honest, we all fail at that. That's why we take it to our prayer closet and ask the Spirit of God to guide us and help us and steer us to His will. To rejoice always, to pray without ceasing and, and everything give thanks. We stay in this broken world. We are still in our flesh, which is always, which is always causing us to be rebellious to God. That's why we want to spend more time in our prayer closet. We want to spend long time, dear brothers and sisters. So continue, King David says, I'll bless the Lord at all times. He, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My, my soul, excuse me, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. So King David says, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Dear brothers and sisters, Paul tells us as a matter of fact about when we see the word boast here, in Galatians chapter 6 verse 14, Paul tells us that, But God forbid, God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So when we boast in the cross, we acknowledge the fact once again that we have been crucified. The world has been crucified to us and we to the world. 2 Corinthians 10, 17, Paul also men mentions that, but he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So dear brothers and sisters, that's our objective of our boasting should be always Jesus Christ of Nazareth, lest we should never ever boast. That's what it is. That's the trap of the enemy, which we need to be aware of every single time. So my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Dear brothers and sisters, today is the call. Let us, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Let us exalt the holy name of Yeshua HaMashiach today together, dear brothers and sisters. In these first three verses, dear brothers and sisters, let's, have we, let's take a note of the four action verbs. I will bless, boast, Magnify, exalt. These are those four action verbs and all the objective of those verbs are Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will bless the Lord. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name, Lord's name together. Dear brothers and sisters, to, today let us, as we have gathered, let us bless the Lord. Let us boast his my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Let us boast in his cross. Let us once again magnify his holy name. Let us exalt his holy name to the highest as we gather together. This psalm, the name of the Lord in this psalm, dear brothers and sisters, I believe has been used 16 times. And that's 
quite significant. So continuing to, let's see, that was continuing to verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, dear brothers and sisters. That's what King David is telling us, that he sought the Lord and the Lord heard him and delivered King David from all his whatever fears, whatever trouble he was in. Today, dear brothers and sisters, it's time, it's time that we call upon the name of the Lord. We call him in truth and in spirit. We pour out our heart and he will hear us and he will deliver us. He will deliver us from from the clutches of the enemy dear brothers and sisters in this broken world the poisonous tentacles of sin whatever form it be has is always trying to devour us and that's where we always need to keep running to that strong tower because the righteous the name of messiah yeshua hamashiach is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are safe. Today is the day to run to the strong tower, dear brothers and sisters. Continuing to verse 5. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Dear brothers and sisters, Lord promises to deliver us from out of all our troubles. Not some, not most, not many, but all our troubles. But we need to wait upon his time. We need to let him do it. I cannot instruct God how to do things. God, I need this. I need to do. You need to do this for me. I need to just let it. Let myself go and say, Lord, here I am. You have created me. Psalm 139 verses 13 through 16. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 tells us that my schedule has already been written in your book. So here I am. Please direct me to that schedule so that you be magnified. You be glorified. So your holy name be exalted through me so that I can bless your name at all times. That should be our purpose of why we are here, dear brothers and sisters. When we resist the devil, when we submit ourselves to God, then the enemy will flee away. James 4, 7 promises us that. Sometimes, most of the times we get it backward, dear brothers and sisters, that we submit to this world, whatever, that's all the enemy doing it. To, to the world, to the enemy or to our flesh, we submit to the enemy, to the world, our flesh, and we try to resist God when God is trying to chastise us. And that's not a good place. That's when we start suffering because we move away from God's will. And that's what the enemy wants, dear brothers and sisters, so that we, he can make our lives miserable. But the good news is, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he who is in us, who is in you and me, than he who is in the world, than he who is trying to bother us, the enemy. Continuing to verse 6, the, actually verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Your brothers and sisters, the, the term angel of the Lord, I believe it appears three times in Psalms. One time is here and other... Other two times is in Psalm 33, the previous Psalm, verses 5 and 6. So, is it is it an allusion to the pre-incarnate Christ? Because it says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. So the point is basically, Messiah is always with us. As Hebrews 13, 5, as Matthew chapter 28, 20 promises us. And also, I believe this... Uh, same scripture the angel of the lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them we can always use in our prayer closet dear brothers and sisters to stand every single time that the angel of the lord is going to deliver continuing to verse 8 oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him dear brothers and sisters today is the day come taste and see that the lord is good yes he is good today is the day come and taste him dear brothers and sisters come to the fountain of living waters because as the scripture has said he who believes in him out of his heart will flow rivers of living water out of his heart will flow rivers of living water that's what messiah said on the last day of sukkot john 7 verse 37 and 38 tells us that so here, 
is one more blessing which is being pronounced. Blessed is the man who trusts in him, dear brothers and sisters today. If you trust in Messiah, no matter what, if you trust in him, we are already blessed. That's a blessing already being given to us, dear brothers and sisters. We need to receive that blessing. If God gives us a check of million dollar, but if we don't go and encash it, it doesn't do any good to anybody. That's how it is. And that's a clumsy example, dear brothers and sisters. Of course, we should be staying away from, I'm not talking this about the money aspect. We should be all staying away from it. We should be staying away from the world, our flesh and all these fleshly things. But this is a clum clumsy example, but I hope we can put the point across that if God give, gives us that check, if we don't encash it, it doesn't do any good to anybody, dear brothers and sisters. So today is the day to claim on that blessing. If you, if, we, if you trust in him, today is the day, dear brothers and sisters, to say, yes, I am blessed because I trust in Messiah. In this verse, verses 4 through 8, we see, dear brothers and sisters, a threefold witness. In verses 4 through 8, we see Messiah saves. In verse 7 of Psalm 34, we see that he keeps. And verse 8 tells us that he satisfies. He satisfies, dear brothers and sisters. Messiah is always for us. And if he is for us, who can be against us? And that same scripture, the same scripture, verse 8, Psalm 34, 8 is actually quoted in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, where 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, and if the Lord leads you, you can take a look at it, dear brothers and sisters. So continuing to verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no one to those who fear him. Dear brothers and sisters, let's take a real... Let's take a real quick a pause over here. So King David is telling us, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no one to those who fear him. Dear brothers and sisters, we hear that those who, this phrase, those who fear the Lord, all over the scriptures, and we see there is a special blessing always pronounced on each and every one who fears the Lord. So what exactly is this fear of fear the Lord? And fear is basically a call here to awe, wonder, worship, and the call for reverence. To fear God is to respond to him in piety and obedience. But that's what we understand. And that is all true. But Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 actually defines for us what is the fear of the Lord. Verse 8, Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 13 tells us the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. I repeat, dear brothers and sisters, the scripture defines what is the fear of the Lord. Because the scripture has promised so many blessings all across the scriptures for those who fear the Lord. And the fear of the Lord, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 tells us that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And dear brothers and sisters, these are the hidden gems in the scriptures which we want to dig into the definition, very definition of faith, the very definition of sin, all these definitions are given in the scripture. If we try to make an effort and ask the spirit of God to guide us, if we give that long time and if we ask the author himself, Holy Spirit, to guide us every single day, we will be getting to know all these things which is in the scripture and not falling for the trap of listening to all wherever we are listening from the pulpits or from whatever teacher we are listening dear brothers and sisters if it doesn't match up with the scripture then it is we need to trash that right then and there and we do apologize if it sounds bad that's what we should be doing because that's what if god's word is only inerrant and infallible not what comes out of my mouth or anna's or david's mouth or anybody's mouth only god's word is infallible and only god's word is inerrant if anybody tries to have a logical explanation of fear or, or sin or faith or things alike, those are good to take those whatever explanation, whatever logic it is. It is good to take those, but we want to be an active beer and we want to go back and dig into the scriptures and see whether it matches up, whether it aligns with the scripture. And if it is not, then dear brothers and sisters, we ought to get rid of those things because those are not going to help us to grow in Messiah. Those are not going to help us in during our hard times, during our valleys. A positive talking won't help us. 
Positive talking is not going to motivational speech is not going to cut it. It's the spirit of God. If motivational speeches would have cut things, then Messiah did not have to come down from heaven to earth to pay the price. It's his precious blood. It's the spirit of God which is going to save us, which is going to pull us out of all the pits. It is the spirit of God which is right this moment talking to you and me, which is holding us together. And that's where we want to yield to the spirit of God. Especially in these end of the end of the end moments, dear brothers and sisters. So that's what Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13, dear brothers and sisters, defines that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Dear brothers and sisters, if the Lord leads you, please use this as a springboard let, to see what are the, the, the scriptures where it says the blessings which are specifically pronounced about those who fear the Lord. What are the blessings all across the scriptures then to see... Now we now that we know from the scripture what is the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So this can be used as a springboard to understand what does the scripture, how does scripture define evil. And that's a good word study, dear brothers and sisters. If the Lord leads you, dear brothers and sisters, we keep talking about word studies. It is so very crucial because we see that scriptures are taken out of context. A word or perhaps half half of a verse is taken out and used in ways which is unimaginable, which is incredible. It sounds very logical. It sounds very convincing, but that's not right. That's not correct. That's not leading us to Messiah. That's not leading us to growing Messiah. The entire goal, once we are saved, dear brothers and sisters, we need to find out. Bible tells us we are Ephesians 2.10 that why we are saved. We are, our, all our days have been preordained before, even before they existed. Ephesians 2.10 tells us that why we are saved. We need to find out. We are saved unto good works. God has already chosen certain things for us. We need to find out, not through our flesh, but by the Spirit of God. And while we wait, which is extremely short, from glory to glory, dear brothers and sisters, after we are saved, our main purpose is this process of sanctification, which happens not through our power or might. Please don't misunderstand us. It's not through our flesh. It's through the Spirit of God, because now the law is broken. Law was all in the flesh. Once we are saved by grace, we walk in the Spirit because grace is through the Spirit of God. That's what we do. We walk in the Spirit. And once we walk in the Spirit, our goal, which Messiah has set for us, is to yield to the Spirit of God. And Messiah's Spirit, the Spirit of God, will be modifying us, will be sanctifying us and making us more Messiah-like. That's the whole goal of why we are saved, dear brothers and sisters. And of course, Added to that is the parable of talents and that's an entire study dear brothers and sisters today we don't want to derail Psalm 34 on that but if the Lord leads you please do go for it dear brothers and sisters to understand that once you're saved why you're saved and what exactly God is calling you for that's the enemy will always stop you dear brothers and sisters. I had no idea that God has a calling like this I was doing my own stuff as I keep telling dear brothers and sisters but later it was he who pulled me. It was not my effort. It will never be my effort because I am a wretch saved by his precious, priceless, holy blood, by his grace and grace alone. God's riches at Christ's expense. And that is true for each one of us, dear brothers and sisters. So today is the day, dear brothers and sisters, to seek him, to grow deeper in this relationship rather than just having a superficial relationship. And the more we grow in him, the more joy will fill our hearts. And that joy is independent of what is going around in this world, what is going in our flesh, how the enemy is trying to attack us. Because that will become, that will become independent of all these factors. That joy is given by the Spirit of God. We don't, I don't know the mechanism, dear brothers and sisters, but I know that it works because it works. It happens every single day. That's how Lord works in our lives for me and my family, dear brothers and sisters. So continue. To verse Psalm 34. It almost felt like that we are not going to get this done. But Psalm 34 continuing to verse 10. So the young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Dear brothers and sisters. That's an out and out explicit promise. The young lions. 
lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Shall not lack any good thing. Come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Dear brothers and sisters, this, I believe this is quoted in 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 12 BC. Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 34 verses 12 through 16 is quoted in 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 12. If the Lord leads you, please do take a look at it, dear brothers and sisters. So continuing to verse 15 says the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to the cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and this righteous is not our righteousness because our righteousness, Isaiah 64 tells us, is filthy rags. It's Lord's righteousness, Messiah's righteousness, which was which is imputed to us, which is given to us. It's a free gift, dear brothers and sisters, absolutely free gift. He who knew no sin was made sin so that me and you as true born again believers can be given the righteousness of God. And if you have been washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, dear brothers and sisters, if you're a true born again believer, no matter today what the enemy is telling you, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He is. His eyes are on you. His eyes are on you. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Your brothers and sisters, I let me repeat this again. The righteous and as true born again believer, we have been imputed the righteousness of Christ. So if you are a true born again believers, wo believer, washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if he is your all in all, then today God is talking to you, the righteous cry out. When you cry out, the Lord hears. And what will he do to you? And delivers them out of all their trouble, dear brothers and sisters. Astonishing, astonishing, staggering, staggering, staggering. That the righteous cry out, Lord will, when you cry out, Lord will hear you and will deliver you out of, out of what? Out of all their troubles, not some, not many. Take heart, dear brothers and sisters, today Messiah says, Cry out to him. He is hearing at his perfect time. He will deliver you out of all the trouble. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves that saves such as have a contrite spirit. That, that's the key, dear brothers and sisters. We need to go to him. We need to go to Messiah broken. We need to go to him empty so that he can fill us. We don't want to go to him with a list of agendas, list of things. Of course, we have our petition. We intercede and we have our supplications and we put forward our Lord, help me with this and that. But we want to go to him and want him to meet us, not with our agendas, but want him to bless us with his, what he has for us. Nowhere, dear brothers and sisters, the Bible suggests that the life of faith is exempt from trouble. Rather, if we trust him, if we trust God and call upon him, the Lord will see us through our troubles and make them a blessing to us and others. That's what verse 34, Psalm 34 verse 18 is telling us. The Lord is near. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Staggering, staggering, staggering was dear brothers and sisters. I had no idea about the scripture. Back in 2015, when Messiah called, he one day all of a sudden, I believe I heard Messiah telling me that write the scripture down and stick it on the wall. And from that day, it has always been there, dear brothers and sisters. And it has always helped me and, and my family every single time. 
every single time whatever the enemy tries to tell us dear brothers and sisters as we keep telling that this is what the lord has called us to do and this is exactly what me and my family my wife our our kids our eight-year-old dorian and our five-year-old son david this is what we do all day long this is what we get to do filled with his goodness lost in his love praising him all the day long dear brothers and sisters as the messiah leads us we come over here this is all all about him it is not nothing about us it has it will never be about us it is all about him and he's the one who sustains us supernaturally every single day as we keep telling dear brothers and sisters that's not the cliche, cliche that we don't know what tomorrow holds for Anna, david or me or my, my wife that's not a cliche that's the truth but we hold we know that who holds that tomorrow we know that messiah holds that tomorrow of course, the, there are days which it becomes harder, but Messiah comes through every single day. And Psalm 34, 19 has been an anchoring voice, anchoring scripture in, me, in our life for me and my family that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Not one, two, many, most, some, but all. He will deliver you. Trust in him, cry out to him, believe him. Today, dear brothers and sisters, whatever your valley is, whatever your pit is, he will pull you out of there because he promises. But trust in him. Don't use your own strength, please. Don't use your own resources, your friends or family. Trust in him, solely in him and him alone. Just lay it down and tell him, Lord, I cannot. God doesn't help those who help themselves. God helps those who come to the end of themselves. And dear brothers and sisters, that's a classical example for me in my personal life. I always thought it that way, that God helped those who helped themselves hearing that phrase or idiom, whatever it is, from my childhood. But when God called, I realized that God helps those who come to the end of themselves. That's how it works, dear brothers and sisters. So today, Messiah is telling you many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out. Of them all. He guards all his bones. And not one of them is broken. And that's a prophecy. As a matter of fact. It's talking about Messiah. We see in John chapter 19 verse 36. When none of Messiah's bone was broken. When he was hanging on the cross. And there is a medical reason behind. Why they used to break the bones. Those days. Who used to be on the cross. Who, was, who were crucified. So he guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. The last verse. I, let me read it out again. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Dear brothers and sisters today if you trust in him. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. And that echoes, as a matter of fact, Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Dear brothers and sisters, today is the day that we want to lay it all down, all our agendas. Today is Anna and David sings for us dear brothers and sisters what a friend we have in jesus today let us realize that greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for his friend messiah laid down his life for you and me he was hated without a cause john 15 25 tells us and we are loved without a cause we don't deserve all this dear brothers and sisters none of us what we deserve is for the wages of sin is death we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Romans 3.23 Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of our sin is death. But God's gift is free gift of salvation in Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach. Today is the day dear brothers and sisters as Anna has the scripture put up. That there is a friend who sticks to you and me closer than a brother. And that friend is Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach. So today as we sing dear brothers and sisters we Welcome you to please join us. Let us use our best voices to sing and glorify and honor him. And let us exalt his holy name to the highest. 
Let us praise him. Let us glorify him. Let us honor him. Because he and he alone is our soul sustainer. Is our breath giver. The name above every single name. Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Anna and David you can please go ahead. Hallelujah. We just praise you this day Lord. of kings to the name above every single name Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ of Nazareth the one name which resonates every single day in every single cells of our body crying out to us telling us come to me come to me those who are weary and tired and heavy laden I will give you rest today is the day to go to him today is the day he will take you in his arms and shield you and thou will find a solace there, dear brothers and sisters. The scripture tells us, Psalm 73, verses 23 through 26. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Psalm chapter 20 verse 7 tells us today let us claim on that dear brothers and sisters. Say some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord God. Dear brothers and sisters, if you haven't gotten a chance to worship with us, to read the scriptures with us, we once again do 
implore you, please do remind and go back and worship with us. Let the Spirit of God, if you have not yet received the fullness of joy, dear brothers and sisters, once again, it's time to claim on 2 Corinthians 10, 5 and get all those thoughts, the distractions and every single things which is being implanted in our minds. We need to take it captive. We need to, as the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, every single minute, we are bombarded with millions and millions of those thoughts from the enemies, which we think those are from, those are natural things, but it is not. Most of the times it is from the enemy trying to discourage us, trying to show the negativity or trying to move us away, take us away from Messiah's presence. So today is the day to bring those thoughts captive. Today is the day to come close to him. And if you, and read the scriptures together once again, dear brothers and sisters, and once again feel the fullness of joy, which Messiah promises, dear brothers and sisters, in these end of the end of the end moments, once again, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves. Let us worship together. Let us, as the Lord leads us, we will be, dear brothers and sisters, worshiping together. We will be looking forward to worship together, dear brothers and sisters. We all are together tied with the Spirit of Christ. We are... A spiritual family, dear brothers and sisters, the Lord has set me and my family, Anna, David and my wife apart. And now our family is you, dear brothers and sisters, our spiritual family, which is through the spirit of Christ. We are tied together. It will be amazing, dear brothers and sisters, to meet on the other side of the chasm together, holding hands and falling at Messiah's feet and glorifying him, the one who was pierced for you and me. So that we can meet on the other side of the chasm and we can be set free from all this darkness, all this brokenness. So we thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again for worshipping with us. Let us keep worshipping together. Let us keep praying for each other. Let us once again exhort, edify and encourage each other, dear brothers and sisters. Not through vain words, but through the scriptures, through Messiah's spirit, dear brothers and sisters. So that... Messiah can accomplish whatever his perfect will is through each one of us. And let's end with a word of prayer. Shall we, Anna? Yes. You can go ahead, please. Lord Jesus, once again, I bring ourselves in your presence, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for this time which you've given us to worship you, Lord. And please fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and talk to us, Lord. And help us to glorify you in whatever we do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. And would you like to say a short prayer for us as well, David, please? Yes. Okay, go ahead, please. Lord Jesus, once can you bring ourselves in your presence, Lord? And as we get to the end of the worship, Lord, bless us, Lord, as we go forth from here, Lord, and help us, Lord, to be in you and under you, Lord, and help us, Lord, to remember that you are our closest friend, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we pray all this. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again for viewing us and fellowshipping for worshiping with us and may god bless each and every one of you shalom